Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and a while back I did a video called Raspberry Pi Surveillance Monitor. I actually did a couple videos on this. And in the last video, I set up this display screen here. This is like a seven inch display, and I had four camera feeds displayed on this little Raspberry Pi display screen. And I absolutely love it. I came to rely on this thing in my daily life because I had it sitting literally directly underneath my monitor on my desk so that I could just glance down and see four different cameras, you know, what those cameras are seeing. It's very helpful for like seeing when people come to the door or UPS shows up or whatever. So that has been working pretty well for a long, long time. Now, two weeks ago, I moved the furniture around in my office a little bit and I redid some wiring and I pull on the cord that powers this monitor and I broke the, the micro USB connector off of the monitor. Now, of course, I could probably figure out a way to solder it back on or something, but that's beyond me. What we're gonna try to do instead is just improve on this setup a little bit with a different touchscreen. So what I have here is the Raspberry Pi 7-inch touchscreen display. This is sort of the official Raspberry Pi touchscreen. We don't have to have a touch screen for this application, but I thought that I would try this out anyways because it was only about 75 bucks for this uh, seven inch touch screen display. Uh, links to all of this stuff, by the way, down in the description if you're interested in doing a similar project. Uh, in addition to the touch screen display, I have this Smart Pi Touch 2. This is a case that's specifically made for the touch screen display plus a Raspberry Pi together in one like supposedly nice little case. Now both of these had super high reviews on Amazon, so we're gonna go ahead and try it out. The Raspberry Pi that I'm using is on the back of this monitor. It is PoE powered with a PoE hat. I don't suspect that that's gonna get in the way of you know any of this uh, new case or anything like that. And it is a Raspberry Pi 3. Now I'm not going to go over how I set up the surveillance monitor in this video. If you guys wanna see how I did the surveillance monitor, go check out the surveillance monitor video, which I'll have a link to in the description. The purpose of this video is just to take this Raspberry Pi that is already functional off of this device, put it on the official Raspberry Pi touchscreen display instead, and see if basically it's gonna be plug and play, if it'll just work the same on this other monitor. The big difference is that this monitor connects with HDMI, whereas this monitor connects using a ribbon cable that goes in this section, this little side section on the Raspberry Pi. So yeah, I've never tried one of these touch screen displays. We're gonna see how it works. Let me bring the camera in close so you guys can get a good look at how I swap these things over. Okay, so first things first, here we have the Raspberry Pi. Uh, you, you see the Raspberry Pi 3 attached to this board. We're gonna unplug our HDMI cable and we're gonna unscrew it from this board. Looks like I have to take the Raspberry Pi hat off in order to properly unscrew it. There we go. All right, so that was pretty easy to remove. Now I can get rid of this other screw here. All right, there we go. So there's my Raspberry Pi 3. And this one, this monitor, unfortunately, is just gonna have to go in the trash. All right, now let's take a look at our new Raspberry Pi touchscreen display. What does it come with? It comes with some jumper cables, some jumper connectors, screws, and the ribbon cable that we need to connect it over to the Raspberry Pi. Looks like that's about it. We also have our Smart Pi Touch 2 case. Let's go ahead and open this guy. All right, so we've got some uh, USB type C. We've got a bunch of different connectors in here. Oh, this is interesting. We have a longer ribbon cable. Oh, a couple ribbon cables. So we have a this size ribbon cable. We have a longer ribbon cable here says read manual. <laughs> uh, this is a US, this looks like a USB type C into USB type C and micro USB. That's interesting. Then we have a US a micro USB that splits out into two micro USB. So this must be for Raspberry Pi 3. This must be for Raspberry Pi 4 is my guess. Setup guide. Uh, we have, these look like Lego connectors. Little Lego connector looking things. I'm sure we'll figure out what those are for. Uh, we have a fan, and then we have the case itself. Looks like there's a stand, a foot stand. 
And then here is the case. So the Raspberry Pi likely fits in here like so. And then this goes over the top. Looks like they've got one with the fan or one without the fan. So you can swap those out. I'll use the one, I might as well use the one with the fan as long as I'm uh, setting this up here. So that's with the fan, okay. Should work fine with the PoE hat as well. And then this goes into the base like so. And, uh, and then you can, or actually probably like this way, yeah. And then you can sort of just swivel the screen up and down. All right, so let's get this thing put together. I'm gonna start by going to the setup page so that I'm uh, looking at the instructions and, not make, and making sure that I'm not missing something. So I didn't realize this, but this case actually works with the camera too. So I have the camera, though I'm not actually gonna use it for this, but there is a spot where you can run the camera over here and then you've got these different um, sort of side pieces. This one basically just has a hole for the camera lens this one covers up the camera section completely. And then this one has a hole for the camera lens and like these Lego bumps. So I guess you could put some Legos on there or something. I'm, again, I'm not sure exactly what that's for. So I'm not gonna use the camera. That's also what this longer uh, display cable is for. For the, this one, you're supposed to run it underneath here and then plug the camera into one part of it. Again, it's not so easy to run it underneath there, but I'm not gonna use this anyway. So, but the notion is this runs underneath here. The camera connects onto the side of the display and then the camera can sort of fit in right here. Now again, I'm not using the camera. We're not gonna use this long ribbon cable. I am however going to use uh, this ribbon cable and we wanna insert this ribbon cable into the Raspberry Pi display on the side here with the blue writing facing up and the blue tab on the far side. So I'm pulling out the little connector. There's a little gray piece that sort of pulls out and then we slide the ribbon cable in and then we click and lock it in with the blue or with these little connectors on the side. So that ribbon cable is now locked in there. That will not come out. I mean, I'm sure it would if I pulled on it hard enough, but it shouldn't come out very easily. The next step is we want to remove these standoffs here and replace them with the gold screws that came in the uh, case, came with the case. Next, we want to put the sort of feet on the display case here. There we go. So now we have our feet in place. Ooh, that's tight. I probably should loosen that up a little bit. Okay, there we go. We got our stand in place. And now we're going to take our cable and we're going to feed it through this hole right here where the Raspberry Pi is going to go on this side. And we want to just get this display screen into the case. And then you take our countersink screws now and we're gonna drop them in place and screw the display into the case. Okay, so we have our ribbon cable coming through and the display is now firmly inside the case here. So same thing here, we wanna put in the display and again, these little ribbon connectors sort of pop up like so and then you can put the ribbon connector in. There's a little cover on it, get rid of that. Put the ribbon connector in and then close it back up by pressing down on the sides of the connector. All right, so that is now in. We're going to pop the Raspberry Pi down. It's okay if the ribbon cable bends a little bit, not too big a deal. Notice also that I'm not putting the PoE hat back on. As I was going through this, I realized that, you know what? We have this cable that's gonna power up both the display screen and the Raspberry Pi, so I really don't need the PoE hat. Uh, the only thing I'd need the PoE hat for would be just to power the Raspberry Pi, so I'd still have to use a cable to power the monitor, so it doesn't really make any sense. I'll save the PoE hat for some other project, and then we will just power this thing up with just this cable here. Uh, and then I'll still have to put network connectivity in, or I might actually just switch on the Wi-Fi on the Raspberry Pi uh, to display those feeds instead. We'll see. Hardwired is always better with camera stuff. All right, next we're gonna put the fan into the fan door. And it says in the instructions that the label of the fan should be facing the Raspberry Pi. So we're gonna pop this guy in here. And then we plug the fan into our GPIO here on the Raspberry Pi. And there's instructions for whether you want the fan running at high speed or low speed. Uh, considering I didn't have a fan on this before, I'm gonna go for the low speed setup. Check the instructions for exactly how that's supposed to go. 
Okay, so now let's put the door on. All right, there we go. There you can see the fan with the door, Raspberry Pi's underneath, and you didn't have to screw the Raspberry Pi in at all. Sort of putting the door on locks it into place. So if you did need to access the Raspberry Pi, you simply just take this back fan door off and the Raspberry Pi is right there for you, ready to go. Also notice on the back of this um, case, there's these four screw holes here, that's for visa mounting, right? So you can put this on a 100 by 100 visa mount and uh, screw it in that way also, instead of using the base. All right, so last thing we need to do is just plug it in and see if it still works the way that it used to. So I'm plugging my network cable in to the network port. Not PoE enabled anymore, but that's okay. And then we have two power cables here. So since this is a Raspberry Pi 3, we're going to use the micro USB to dual micro USB, sort of the splitter there. There we go. And then we want to power up our micro USB here. So let me grab an adapter. All right, power it on. Fan spinning, that's good. Let's see if we get anything on the display. All right, so we're getting something. If all goes well, this will boot up and then immediately start displaying my cameras. Okay, so there we go. We have one, two, three, four cameras. Now, of course, the first thing that we notice here is that the resolution of this screen is not nearly as good as the resolution on the, other, on the old screen was. So I'm gonna have to readjust that in the settings. Uh, but by and large, I'm happy with this. I'm glad it worked. Let's go ahead and pull the plastic off. There we go. This is a touch screen, but I don't have any touch screen functionality enabled. Uh, so it's not actually going to be used as a touch screen. And the next thing I need to do is just log in and adjust my resolution so that I can display all four cameras on this screen. So after some quick adjustments, we can see that I have adjusted the resolution of the display output to the resolution of this screen, which is 800 by 480. And uh, yeah, looks like now we are good to go. There we have it. I'm glad that this project went really well. I actually quite like this case. It's kind of a neat form factor. I also like that it can be Visa mounted. Uh, the touch screen was unnecessary for this application, but if you were running Raspbian with the full GUI, you could use the touch screen. Or certainly if you were using this for anything else that was touch screen, you know, where you needed a touch screen, this is a good little device to use. So links to everything down below, those are of course Amazon affiliate links. If you click on those links and buy something, it doesn't change your price at all, but it gets us a couple bucks for the uh, effort of creating these videos for you. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name's Chris, the Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching.